Now, loneliness is a self-centered, self-focused emotion. It comes from an over-concern about oneself. It is the inability to communicate, a feeling of being isolated. People have a lot of, you know, a lot they would like to say or express, but they just don't know how or else they're afraid to express it. Sometimes you can find the loneliest person in a whole room full of people. Now, all of us, brethren, from time to time will suffer from the feeling of loneliness to one degree or another. For this reason, we must all understand what causes people to feel lonely and also how to recognize a person who is suffering from this trauma. There are ways to overcome this feeling and methods to help others conquer it. So what are the causes and contributing factors for loneliness? Well, basically we can have 10 basic causes and 10 basic contributing factors. One is, the first one is the cold and stifling influence of society. Because, you know, society today, as we are all witnesses to that, society today is becoming more and more depersonalized. We live in the age of the computer and the impersonal assembly line approach. You know, humankind is becoming more preoccupied with his problems and survival than he is with anything else. And from what I could also see, they're more preoccupied with their little gadgets and their mobile phones and all the other gadgets than with really uh, advancing relationships and having a decent and nice social life. You know, one of the worst things that I've heard was, you know, friends getting together on Skype. They're living in the same town, by the way. And Serbia is not a big country, and they just drink coffee over Skype. I mean, that's one of the that's one of the craziest things I've ever heard. But this is the society in which we're living today. So the first very cause of loneliness could be the coldest, stifling influence of society. The second one is being programmed for loneliness from childhood, because you know people can program themselves for loneliness from childhood by not constantly widening their circle of friends, sticking with the same people all the time and never adding new names to one's list of friendships prevents a person from developing the art of acquiring friends. When circumstances separate them from their you know, familiar circle, those people find themselves lonely and afraid to reach out to others. This may happen to us when we come, perhaps, from the world into the Church of God. The third cause and contributing factor is preoccup preoccupation with self. And that's, of course, one of the, again, one of the most outstanding trends in our society. It is, it is obsession with self. Me, myself, and I. So, you know, what is preoccupation with self? Well, concentrating too much on self and one's own moods, condition, and feelings causes one to be even more lonely. The fourth cause of loneliness is change of environment. Because, you know, stepping into a new environment where people are, and circumstances are different from the old familiar faces and routines can cause loneliness, indeed. Changing one's environment can be compared to a baby bird that is used to its nest where it's warm, you know, and secure. In order for it to become strong, mature, and healthy, it must grow to look out to the world around it. When it is forced to leave the security of the nest, it will be frightened by its new experiences and won't feel comfortable with the rush of cool air under its wings where it was always warm. Until it accepts the change, this change in life, the bird will never really experience the thrill of flying. And so if you are to mature and grow into a well-balanced personality, you must also take a few daring steps and experience few new challenges life has to offer. The fifth cause that contributes to loneliness or the fifth contributing factor is looking within to past memories. And of course, we all are prone to that, especially as we advance in age. Now, dwelling on the pleasant memories of a comfortable past, you know, friends, family, and social life can cause loneliness. Because thinking about home and perhaps the old friends is not bad in itself, but these thoughts should not consume so much of your time that you are neglecting the opportunity to make new friends or neglecting to take full advantage of, for example, what the Church of God has to offer. The sixth contributing cause is homesickness if you're away, if you go to college, you know, for many, this may be the first time that they go away from home and a feeling of loneliness or homesickness may be only natural, but does not have to be long lasting. The seventh cause is new pressures and challenges, you know, because if you go from home, if you're 
going to attend a college or if you're traveling to another part of the world for work, you know, a new way of life will with added pressures and demands such as, you know, in college term papers, tests, homework, in our ambassador experience, it was also club meetings, you know, that may contribute to your feeling of loneliness. Then also the eighth contributing factor is a fear of self-disclosure or a lack of self-confidence. You know, as a stranger, you may feel uncomfortable and uneasy about meeting new people. And this is generally because you fear, you fear others will discover your inadequacies and they will look, they will not look like you or accept you for what you are. Now the tendency is to withdraw and enjoy privacy or privacy within yourself. The ninth contributing factor is growing pains. Because a new level of maturity must be faced now that you are in the Church of God, brethren, and it may prove more difficult without the familiar crutches of you know, family and close friends to help you make the adjustments. We are growing, and we are growing as God leads us, and at times He leads us in a very unprecedented ways and unpredictable, in unpredictable unpredi situations. And the tenth contributing factor is failure to walk with God. The loneliest feeling you can experience is when you are cut off from God in this evil and darkened world. So get in contact with God and your symptoms of loneliness will start to disappear. Now what are the steps that you can take to conquer loneliness? Well, one of the steps is wholehearted participation in church activities. Or if you're at college, you know, in classes, work and college activities, or you're, if you're at work, at work activities. The other one is the, that you should not hibernate away, you know, feeling sorry for yourself and expect the feeling of loneliness to go away. You should hibernate in your living rooms or your bedrooms, you know, if you're church members and, uh, you know, feeling sorry for yourself and expect the feelings of loneliness to go away. Begin at once to make new friends. Well, God said he will give us, if we leave this world and everything in the world, he'll give us a hundred times more and a thousand times more. Now, consider also the fact that there are many others in the same situations as you and that you can, you know, be a big help to them by being friendly and giving encouragement. And this is also one of, one of the golden rules. Think of, think of others first. This will be like the fifth step you can take to conquer loneliness. Think of others first, you know, give your mind to this end and discipline yourself in giving your time and service to others. When you feel especially lonely, strike up a conversation with someone as soon as possible. Now with Skype, it's easier than ever. Ask questions and be interested in finding out about, you know, other people's lives. Soon you'll find that you feel a lot better. There is another step you can take and well, in this day and age, especially in the Anglo-Saxon world with this Protestant ethic, it's to be positive and smile, you know. But smile, brethren, smile. Don't just smile with your lips. Smile from deep down inside. Show yourself friendly and you'll begin to develop new friendships. Keep in mind Proverbs 18.24. Assume people will like you and you'll discover they will. Be approachable. Make it easy for people to talk to you by showing them attention and being responsive. Get others talking about subjects they are familiar with or are interested in and you can help others while you are helping yourself get over feeling lonely. Sincerely compliment people by noting their accomplishments and successes. Notice little things such as a nice hair, you know, a new dress, their inspiring example. Be genuine, don't flatter. In our case, if somebody quotes something from the Bible and gives a very good quote, and very good observation. We are indeed not to flatter, but we are to praise God for that and, of course, acknowledge the wonderful work that God is doing in all of us. Another step, the twelfth one, would be be a good listener. You know, listen with attention, interest and respect. Don't change the conversation to yourself. Get other people talking about themselves. And again, with in this day and age, brethren, people seem to be more estranged than ever before, and yet it's never easy to communicate with all of you and it's never easy for all of us to communicate, to have a mutual communication, even though we are just uh, miles and miles and miles and continents apart. So we need to take advantage of internet, as I've seen. As I've said, I've said many times in uh, the past year that we, one of the greatest omissions we were having is that we didn't use internet enough for the glory of God and for the advantage of His people. 
Here is another step if you're all together, perhaps for the feast. Eat with others and take time to talk. Aim to learn as much as you can about others. When I was in England, I heard from one of my friends a proverb there. A family that eats together stays together. And we do have this principle also about eating together in uh, in the Bible. Remember how Paul says, if somebody is, someone is called a brother and he lives sinful life, don't even eat with him. So there is kind of bond that is being created when people just eat together. So keep that in mind. Jewish people know that very well. So they have special Sabbath meals and uh, they get together special on the Sabbath. So... Uh, and uh, have a small wine you know to drink and make the Sabbath special so they do understand that and that's a very good example for us to copy as well another step you can take is do something for someone else because it's always easy to do things for yourself you know do something for someone else you know look for ways to help other people you know do something anything for others if you're good at writing prose or poetry write something to him about himself if you're good at handicrafts you know make a gift if you just uh, an hour ago, I've seen a knitting from one of our members, a beautiful knit. She was asking, she was concerned about the patterns and wondering whether some patterns that are being offered for knitting could be of pagan origin. So she asked for my opinion. And anyway, I've seen her knitting. She showed me a sample of that beautiful handiwork. Absolutely marvelous. But, you know, others are good at others. Some of you are good at making, uh, uh, making little cartoons. And uh, one of you is very good at making uh, 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 what's the caricatures. So we can always do, and we all laugh, of course, when we see some of those caricatures, and that's that's a good way to conquer loneliness. We, I know we are all scattered in this world. I know, brethren, it's cold winter outside. I know Christmas carols are being, you know, sung. Even in Serbia, we have never seen this. I mean, this is the first decade of December, and I've never seen people decorate their homes for the New Year's Eve. Now, they, use, they don't have Christmas trees. They always use trees for New Year's. You know, Christmas customs in Serbia, Christmas comes in January and there is no trees attached to that, to the Christmas customs. The tree in Serbia and basically in East Europe was used always for in connection with the New Year's Eve for some reason. But anyway, I've never seen in the first decade of December that people would just start decorating their homes and having their New Year's or Christmas trees. That's something new. But I guess the spirit of ecumenism is conquering this nation, which is unbelievable, very unbelievable to me consider the history, the bloody history, and what the Catholic Church has done to this nation. Uh, and uh, the spirit of ecumenism is now replacing the uh, various other customs. So what Dr. Thiel has just released about the Vademecum, the uh, handbook, Vatican handbook on, on ecumenism, is very on time, right on spot. So do something for someone, you know, bake a gift. If you use your talents to do something for someone else, You'll both enjoy it much more. You'll be learning to love. You know, yeah, make those music compositions. Do things that, you know, you've been doing at the feast. I've seen beautiful things you've been doing. It will help you always conquer the loneliness. Then also remember, as one of the steps, that, you know, your education in the Church of God is really personality development and building the qualities of leadership because we are all to be the leaders of tomorrow. A real leader doesn't have time to be lonely because he's so involved and interested in others that he doesn't have time to think about himself over much. Another step that you can take you know, to conquer loneliness is don't make the mistake of making a few friends and then ceasing to widen your circle, whether it is within the Church of God or outside the Church of God. You know, continue to make new friends regularly. This doesn't mean to forsake old friends, but learn to include new people. Also, another step is beware of the pitfalls of getting involved, so to speak, involved, seriously, you know, early. You know, leave some time. If you're in college, you know, or, or somewhere else, you know, don't get involved seriously with someone early in your, in your career, so to speak. You know, when you're, when you're feeling lonely, it's easy to attach yourself to the first friendly person who shows an interest in you. So, you know, dating is another Another topic, we'll cover that next Sabbath, dating, you know, do's and don'ts for girls and, 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 and guys. But don't hinder yourself by getting serious too soon, even within the Church of God, you know. Leave some time, Brendan. We need always to get to know each other better and see about compatibility. And how do we know that we have chosen right mate? That's another subject for another Bible study. How do we recognize a lonely person? Well, a lonely person is one who is shy and retiring and stays to himself and herself. I've seen plenty of that in Africa, and that really bothers me. 
So I do encourage those of you who will go to Africa, please do not let people get away with that. That's wrong. Another sign that somebody is lonely is somebody who is unhappy and rejected. Some may take the opposite appearance and be loud, you know, bragging, etc., hiding behind a false front of bravado, when really he feels very lonely and insecure. Discouragement is a sign of loneliness due to lack of involvement and participation. A lonely person reflects a negative attitude to one degree or another. I very well recognize myself in that one. And a person's tone of voice can be a key to identifying a lonely person, whether it be mousy, quiet and soft-spoken, or loud and boisterous. When I mentioned, you know, negative attitude, I, I felt very lonely, I have to tell you, when I was at the college, an ambassador when I was a student, I really felt lonely because I believed that I went, that I was going to be attending with people who are just fired up for the work of God, fired up for the word of God. And yet when you hear from your classmates that, you know, what will they do when they go out of the college they are only goal was go out and make some money. When you f see a lack of zeal for, for, you know, some things, for example, we're moving, you know, it's for example, summertime, now plenty of American students had cars. Those of us who came from other countries didn't have any cars, so we had, you know, we had to just take and move our things by hands. How many of those of our fellow students with cars passed by us in their cars and didn't offer a ride? Or there was a comment, oh, what a pity you don't have a car. So how can you not feel lonely in such an environment, brethren? It was the apostasy in WCG uh, surfaced in 1995, but it was well in preparation and the Laodicean attitude the Laodicean attitude was well present in the old WCG before even the apostasy so yes I tended to be sometimes negative and you know negative attitude to have to one degree or another there was also suppression that I felt from constant pressure to be Americanized you know there are things that are good in America but there are things that are just completely cultural thing that has nothing to do with the truth of God or with the doctrines of the Bible. Sadly, there was this drive to basically promote the American culture as the Bible culture. That doesn't work, brethren. The Bible culture is the culture of the Middle East, after all. And in all of those uh, parables of Jesus Christ, we actually find, and in Proverbs as well, we actually find the Middle East cultural elements. We don't find Serbian cultural elements, we don't find American cultural elements, we find Middle East cultural elements. But anyway, we live in a different time, I understand it. it's a different time, and in different cultures. But, you know, promoting our American or Serbian or whatever culture is the Bible doctrine is completely wrong. That's why I felt very lonely, by the way. And the overall lack of enthusiasm for the truth of God is was really killing me. And I'm coming to realize that one of the reasons why all of us have stayed here, I've, on Sunday I had a long walk in the nearby gorge and brethren I'm realizing I'm realizing in my case I, I was tempted to leave the truth as probably many of you have been or all of you have been I'm sure Satan is working harder than all of us but I've realized I wonder why did we stay when so many left now this is digression of course but I feel it's relevant for me to share it with you I feel brethren that I stayed nevertheless and that you stayed because we fell in love with the truth that's the first love. Remember how, you know, we, we were saying about the first love, you know, we feel first love. That's the first love. The first love is always the strongest, has the greatest impressions. And when you first time fall in love with somebody, you know, you remember that for for all your lifetime. Anyway, the same is it seems with the truth. I fell in love with the truth because I was an atheist before. I had no idea about the Bible. This is not a Bible culture where I live. And I fell in love with God's truth. I got fired up about the truth of God. And that's probably that first love because I fell in love that really kept me all this time through thin and thick. And the same is probably true with you, brethren. And I wonder what those people who have left, have they ever really fallen in love? Had they ever really fallen in love with the truth? I wouldn't think so. If they did, they would be still around and sticking to the truth because, you know, the first love, the first love is never forgotten. That's a Serbian proverb. So the first time when you fall in love with God's word, with God's truth, you will not, for, you know, you'll not let it go. It seems that there were many, even in Ambassador, many students and their parents, relatives, whoever, many other church members who never really fell in love with the truth. 
perhaps they got into the church because they were afraid of the Great Tribulation, or perhaps they were just uh, drawn by their relatives, or drawn by the very pleasant atmosphere in the church, whatever, brethren, but they obviously didn't fall in love with the truth, which my point is, please, if you haven't fallen in love with the truth, make sure to pray to God that you fall in love with the truth, because that is probably what is going to, you know, preserve us through thick and thin that is yet to come. The beast bar, the rise of the beast bar, Karl Theodor zu Gutenberg, most likely, when he gets enthroned in Europe, you can count. It will be a milestone. It will be a major test of our love for the truth, brethren. A major test. So please, if you haven't fallen in love with the truth, ask God for that love and fall in love with the truth as soon as possible. Now, how can you help others who are lonely? Well, there are various ways, of course. You can invite them to join you and your friends for a particular get-together. Then, of course, be sure to include them in your conversation, asking them questions and getting to know them. Spend more time with them than with your other friends to help them feel more comfortable and accepted. When you see others sitting alone or off to themselves and looking unhappy, strike up a conversation or sit down and get to know them. Draw them out and let them know that you are interested in their lives. And afterwards, when you see them again, try to make it a point to stop and say hello and take time to see how they're doing. You know, be concerned, in other words. What is the Christian love but the out, outgoing concern? That was always one of the main topics in the church. And Mr. Armstrong would be constantly reminding us there are two ways of life, brethren. One is the way of get and the other one is the way of give. He suddenly give material things. And I'm very grateful, in fact, that we in this Philadelphia remnant are sharing those material resources because... They're very unevenly distributed in this satanic world. But it's not even, you know, it's not only financial resources. It is also, you know, it is mutual concern and encouragement. And it is, you know, outgoing concern. That's what the true love is. You can ask them to help you on a special project for, you know, whatever. It's club or some other class or college function. You know, help them get involved. I wish sometimes we can perhaps, perhaps one of these days, sometimes online, perhaps we will be able to have spokesman club. That's extremely was extremely profitable experience that I had at college and made me uh, made me a good speaker and could probably make the same with all of you or at least if you cannot be a superb speaker you can be a better speaker he helped me brethren to streamline my thoughts my ideas and nowadays when I have to express something I, I've learned how to uh, discriminate between uh, more important less important things you know, there are plenty of things we can all talk about, but, you know, I realize if there is a subject, there are more important things that I could perhaps mention to draw my audience in, to listen to me. Uh, I've learned to discriminate and to form my thoughts, to define them well. And that's all the uh, fruits of the wonderful spokesman club. Sadly, in our country here, in Serbia, we don't really have spokesman clubs at all. You know, we have students who just go through the uh, educational, so-called educational system, and uh, many of them are just poor speakers. They just never learn how to express their thoughts. And it's very good because if you have interaction with other people, uh, which will help you get out and overcome loneliness, when you define your thoughts well and when you can express them well, you know, that really makes you even more interesting as, uh, as, uh, as a potential friend. And we'll be speaking about how to put some magnetism into your, into your personality and so on. So be responsive and approachable. You know, don't brush people off because you have important, under quotation mark, important things to do. So anyway, here in the God's Church, brethren, in conclusion, we have the unique opportunity to be with others who are learning God's laws and who have God's Holy Spirit. And now that we're very small in number, it's even easier to get to know one another and uh, remain close to one another. You need not to be alone in God's Church. You need not to be alone. Loneliness is a negative emotion and one that God from the beginning did not intend that man should experience. Because in Genesis 2 and verse 18 it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. You know, loneliness is an emotion that causes you to be a negative person. And in order to fight it, you must replace it with the positive emotion of love and outgoing concern for others.